Rabbi Arnold Resnikoff. I served uh, four years in the Navy before I was a rabbi and 25 after. I was an assistant uh, Sixth Fleet chaplain, which meant I visited all the ships in the Mediterranean, plus the Marines in Beirut. In October, uh, of 1983, I was uh, told that uh, an individual had been killed by sniper fire uh, and they requested that I go to Beirut to hold a memorial service. So by the time I got there, it was Friday. Sunday morning at 6.20 in the morning, the uh, bomber hit the building about 75 yards away from me. I remember that the Marines there were, were young. A lot of times Americans picture Marines as John Wayne, these old rugged people, but this was peacekeeping. This really wasn't a fighting mission. So most of these Marines were young. They were teenagers, 6.20 in the morning. Most of them were asleep. I happened to be in the bathroom brushing my teeth. And I remember I was half dressed. I was in um, T-shirt and trousers, and all of a sudden, uh, it, you know, it, feel, it felt like uh, the, the building was going to collapse. Uh, the door came off the hinges, furniture came down, windows exploded. I remember throwing myself uh, on the ground. And then, you know, I picked myself up and I went out and everybody was, uh, you know, either, either uh, under their bunks or, or, or looking around, didn't know what happened. And I remember there were probably 30 seconds that we were literally uh, slapping each other on the back and thanking God that we had made it, that whatever hit our building, the shell or the mortar, you know, that we had withstood it. Then we started to hear these terrible screams and that's when we realized that all we had felt was the shock blast from the explosion next door. Four days later when President, then Vice President George Bush Sr. and the White House team came, they brought FBI with them and they did a study and they said at that point, this had been the largest non-nuclear explosion ever recorded. The Catholic chaplain, who was the only other chaplain left standing after the bombing, said, follow me. And we went out and sometimes when I tell the story, it's as if I'm reliving it and I can remember distinctly what came to my mind was the expression, uh, I couldn't believe my eyes. And I never really knew what that expression meant until that day because the building wasn't there and, and you, you really couldn't believe your eyes. I thought I had made the wrong turn. I thought I had gotten confused. I thought, you know, I just couldn't believe a whole building was gone. And then through the smoke and the, and the rubble, you start to focus and you start to understand there's just pieces of this building. And then you start seeing pieces of human beings. You know, 241 uh, American military people died. It was the most Americans who died in one battle since Iwo Jima in World War II. And um, who knows you know, how many in one day. And then there was another 60 that were severely wounded. So there were literally bodies and pieces of bodies. And uh, you know, we just tried to do what we could until the uh, helicopters came, the ambulances came, the people came. It seemed like it was forever. I remember we were tearing our clothes apart to just wipe uh, uh, dirt or, or blood from people's faces and I, I used my undershirt, I, I, I used my kippah, my skull cap, it got bloody, I tossed it away. Uh, I remember the Catholic chaplain had never seen me without a, my head covered and he tore a piece of his uniform and he put it on my head. Four days later when the White House team came and as I said led by uh, then Vice President George Bush, they asked me uh, as one of the Sixth Fleet chaplains to write a report and send it to the White House. And uh, I actually asked my admiral if I should go through him, and he said, no, the vice president has asked you to do it, so send it directly to the White House. And uh, I remember getting a note back from President Reagan saying, thank you for your words and thank you for your deeds, and I hope you don't mind if we share your words with others. The next thing we knew, we got a video from the White House showing President Ronald Reagan's reading my report in full as his keynote address to Jerry Falwell and the 1984 Baptist Fundamentalism Convention, uh, which had 20,000 people attending in Washington, D.C. at the D.C. Conference Center. And President Reagan gets up and says, I'm going to do something I've never done before, read another man's words. I'm going to read to you another man's words. Some reason for hope. We need to keep faith and to keep searching, even in the worst of times. Only then may we find strength enough to keep believing that the best of times 
might still be. These were the words of Lieutenant Commander Reznikov. I read them because I just felt that all of us, and I know how much you do of this, let us strive to live up to the vision of faith that Chaplain Reznikov saw that day, and let us not never stop praying and working for peace. Thank God and thank you and God bless you all.